How long has your group been active? Uh, Habitat for Humanity, uh, that's what Habitat's all about. Where are your most successful and active chapters? Where are the most successful ones? And active, yes. Uh, well, that's an exciting thing, too. Uh, the older projects are the most successful ones, which means that as they grow and as they go along in time, they tend uh, to get stronger. Uh, one of our oldest projects uh, is in Immokalee, Florida. That's in the southern part of Florida where we're building for migrant workers. We have built uh, over 30 homes there and have land uh, acquired for another uh, about 50 homes. We have a tremendous project in Kansas City, Missouri where we've built and renovated over 50 homes. We've completely uh, changed one neighborhood in Kansas City. Of course, the oldest project is in Sumter County, Georgia, where the headquarters of Habitat for Humanity are located in Americas. Uh, the original program called Partnership Housing of Cornelia Farm, a Christian community out of which Habitat for Humanity grew, and now Habitat for Humanity uh, has built over 200 homes uh, for low-income families just in that one South Georgia county, and we're building a home every two weeks there. How about the success of the project from this standpoint? Those that have been sold homes uh, and keeping up with the payments and retaining their home over a period of time, uh, the early ones, back 10 years, 8 years. Right. We have some families uh, that have been in their homes now uh, uh, going back to the original project that even predated Habitat for Humanity, that program called Partnership Housing. Uh, some families have been in their homes now as much as 17 and 18 years. But the Habitat for Humanity homeowners, uh, the oldest ones, have been in their homes now for 10 years. But my question, I think I should say, do many default over the years? We, we have had an amazing uh, record in that regard. Uh, very, very few families uh, uh, have, have def in fact, we've never had in the United States an, an actual default in the sense that we had to go to the courthouse and uh, uh, sell off uh, the property through uh, legal uh, process. We've had some families get behind, but we've been able to work with them, and uh, through a process of working with them, uh, we've, uh, we've worked things out and have never had to actually foreclose a single home in the United States. We've had to foreclose a few overseas, but not even many overseas. Does Habitat for Humanity maintain ownership and then sell it uh, with a no interest loan? That's true. Cost? When, when a family is chosen uh, to have a home, uh, they are required to put in so many hours of what we call sweat equity. They have to put in 200, 300, 400, 500 hours. It varies from project to project. They have to make a modest down payment the house is then built. They have helped build it. They have been a part of the process of, of designing it and choosing the colors for the rooms and the color of the house. Oh, no, these are not renovated homes. These are built from? We build from the ground up, and we also do renovation. Uh, Habitat does repair work, renovation, and building from the ground up. But most of the work that we do is from the ground up. But whether it's renovation or whether it's building from the ground up, the families have to participate. Then after the home is complete, they move in, the home is deeded to them, they become homeowners. Habitat for Humanity believes in home ownership. They then begin to make their payments, but we use what we call uh, the economics of Jesus, or biblical economics, or kingdom economics. No profit, no interest, and they have a long term to pay the money back, usually 20 years. So that makes it possible for very low-income families to afford the payments. Now, these are people that are working, employed. Most of them are working uh, people. They have some kind of an income, uh, but uh, because of the low uh, pay that they receive for whatever reason, maybe not uh, well-educated, maybe a physical problem uh, of not being able to, uh, to do uh, work very much because of physical limitations, but for but there are many reasons why people have limited income. Uh, but they are required to pay back, but on terms they can afford. You know, the Bible says if you lend money to the poor, you shouldn't charge interest. And we follow that biblical idea. And that's why the people can afford to make those payments. Are there any strings attached as far as religious affiliation is concerned? Do they have to be Baptist or can they no. be Catholic? Can they be Jews, no. black, oriental, or what? All of the above. Mm -hmm. All of the above. Uh, Habitat for Humanity is openly and overtly and unashamedly a Christian organization. But a part of the economics of Jesus that we use uh, tells us that we cannot discriminate against anybody for any reason. Poverty, low income is the main criteria that we use. 
Uh, Jesus, when he fed the multitudes on the hillside, the criteria for getting fed was being hungry. And the criteria for, for getting a Habitat for Humanity house is being too poor to go to the bank. How and uh, when did Jimmy Carter become involved in Habitat for Humanity? Uh, Jimmy Carter became uh, very actively involved in 1984. Uh, he and his wife Rosalind had some contact with us going back as early as 1982. But in 1984, he became a member of Habitat's International Board of Directors. His wife Rosalind became an official advisor of Habitat. And they plunged in uh, in a big, big way in 1984. And since that time, have taken two work camps to New York City, one to Chicago. And then uh, this year, uh, we have a very exciting project on the horizon. Uh, Jimmy and Rosalind Carter, along with my wife Linda and myself, uh, and a lot of folks from Indiana and Ohio, will be going to Charlotte, North Carolina. 300 of us will be going to Charlotte, North Carolina uh, on July 26, a Sunday, to start work on Monday morning, July 27. And in five days, we intend to build a city block, 14 houses in five days for 14 uh, low-income families. And that will be a part of a larger effort that we are calling Habitat for Humanity House Raising Week, during which time we hope to build over 300 houses in all the various Habitat projects in a five-day period. I know uh, former President Carter is an accomplished uh, uh, craftsman because he, he made a, a very beautiful set of furniture that right. sold uh, right. and he donated the proceeds. And I wanted to ask you, he doesn't just showcase, he actually gets in and works like everyone else. He works everybody under the table. I mean, I mean if we announce the time of going to work as uh, 7 o'clock, he'll be out there at 6. And if we quit at 5, he'll be there till 6. Uh, he, he outworks everybody. And he's very single-minded in terms of his work. When he's out there to give a week of his time to build houses, he's got the saw and he's got a hammer in his hand and he's driving nails and sawing boards and digging foundations more than anybody. He outworks everybody. One final question about the Muncie Project. How far along is it and when do you expect to see it develop? We, this uh, week, uh, we have had uh, groundbreaking uh, for... Uh, uh, the first uh, house uh, for the first couple of houses, the first four families actually have been chosen here in Muncie, and the project has been launched. Construction will be getting underway uh, very soon. We don't know the exact date yet, but uh, the first four families have been chosen, and the project, even though the money is not in the bank, uh, but on faith, we are launching this project, and that's the Habitat way. We say even pagans can build houses if you've got money in the bank. So we launch it the Habitat way, on faith, move on faith, believing that God moves with you uh, when you do move, move on faith. And we've got thousands of houses to show that that way works. Does most of the money come from uh, church congregations? The money overwhelmingly comes from concerned individuals, men and women and boys and girls, and local church congregations. But in a lot of communities, community-based foundations, companies uh, contribute. They give materials. Uh, skilled people donate their services, plumbers, electricians, uh, people with a backhoe will come out and dig the ditches that need to be dug. Uh, but by a very large uh, variety of ways, uh, the materials are made available, the money is made available, the families themselves have to contribute and put in their labor, and the houses go up.